Ladies and gentlemen, there's a story coming out saying Enrique Tario worked directly with DC police. But, you know, we all remember it was what, two years ago that it came out that he was an informant and he lost a lot of members of the Proud Boys. Well, he has since stepped down as the leader of that organization. But now it's coming out that he worked directly with D.C. police. Now, you might say, why would he work with them? Well, number one, we know these extremist groups have always been in cahoots with the police. We've all heard about how the Klan and the police are pretty much the same in America and along with other groups. So what did he do? Well, during the time he was still the leader of the Proud Boys, he coordinated with Metro Police Department in Washington, D.C. to keep his people away from counter-protesters. The claim raises alarm about the Metro Police Department willingness to work with far-right extremist groups. It also highlights concerns for uh, left-wing and anti-racist group. Uh, they're claiming that the MPD focus more on their activities while ignoring the threats from the far right. So what the police ultimately did, anything that these extremist groups did, they ignored. But anybody that was not them, then that's when they wanted to be out there, you know, ruling with a heavy fist on everyone else. But we all, who didn't know this about the police? We all knew this. We can tell by your actions. So former National Policy Institute director Evan McLaren gave Hate Watch emails showing MPD previously liaisoned with the white nationalist group National Policy Institute to ensure the safety of a planned event in 2017, months after the deadly far-right Charlottesville, Virginia riot, McLaurin publicly disavowed uh, white nationalism in April. MPD did not respond to hate watch requests for comments. Well, we always knew, and, and make no mistake about it, a lot of these police officers themselves are part of these groups. That's why, you know, they're willing to help them out, but no one else. All right. So Tario claimed in a deposition that he would tell MPD officers, hey, I want to march to the monument. And they'll tell me, hey, there's counter protesters between where you are and the monument. They've called me and they've told me, hey, going towards your direction there's a big group of counter protesters. I'd leave that. So the police were literally tipping them off while they were marching to go in other directions because counter protesters were about to approach them. So, I mean, who's shocked over this? We know y'all do this. We know, that, come on, we know y'all do this. And it's more than just this Metro Police Department. This is done all over the country. Tario said he would guide the Proud Boys away from counter protesters. However, Tario and the Proud Boys would engage in street violence against left wing and anti racist group. And they did this all the time. Tario was not present in the district during January 6th insurrection because MPD arrested him two days before the violent riot for uh, December 2020 vandalization of a Black Lives Matter banner at a historic Black church. The D.C. Superior Court convicted Tario and he served five months. Remember, he was screaming and crying to get out of there because the conditions are bad. Well, the conditions are bad because of the people you favor. They wanted the conditions like that in prison and they don't reform anybody either. So you go in there to work and do their slave work. All right. So 
He currently faces charges of seditious conspiracy and other felonies, along with several other lieutenants in relation to the January 6th insurrection. MPD previously placed Lieutenant Shane Lamond in the, you know, he's part of the Intelligence Bureau on leave while the department conducted an investigation into his alleged improper communication with Tario. So you got insiders inside of the police department helping these right-wing extremist groups as they're marching and protesting on the streets. Well, I mean, we already know they don't do no real police work up in here, so why would we believe they would be doing the right thing? They won't. So, Tario's lawyer subpoena Lamond, who testified on their client's behalf in an upcoming trial. However, Lamond's attorney responded that Lamond was under investigation for potential obstruction and would plead the fifth right now uh, not to testify and risk self-incrimination. Hate Watch previously reported that roughly 26,000 MPD email threads dated from May 2011 to December 2017 that contain surveillance logs of demonstrations organized by groups like Antifa and DC Black Lives Matter. The thread shows that IB tracked protesters' location throughout the district using social media and surveillance from on-ground officers. Hate Watch contained the emails. And, you know, I'm not surprised. I mean, look how sneaky and calculated these folks are. So they interacted with white nationalist groups while they were out protesting to tell them what direction to go in and what direction not to go in. That sounds like a lot of bias in your police department, which we always knew it was there. And this is really just proving it even further. MPD acknowledged a leak of an unlisted YouTube video. Hate Watch can confirm Lamond was included in one IB email thread that provided the location of left-wing protesters during at least one in dem- during at least one demonstration in Washington. The mother of all rallies on September 16th, 2017. So these cops cooperated with these far right groups to coordinate law enforcement efforts around events. Well, you can tell. I mean, how many times have we seen these people in fist fights out on the streets and the police are standing off to the side, not doing nothing? Now you know why. They're in cahoots with these far right wing groups. Now you know why. So, It goes into Richard Spencer, the National Policy Institute, dating from 2017 and 2018. Spencer gained national prominence in 2016 by giving old white supremacists ideas of fresh suit and tie look during a national um, speaking tour. In the image crashing down after a deadly August 2017 Unite the Right, rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. A neo-Nazi ran his car into an anti-racist protester, and we know about Heather Heyer being killed. And it was a bunch of other people injured. The event contributed to widespread cancellations of Spencer's speeches across the U.S. So, Y'all, I'm sure nobody is shocked that the police and these right wing um, agencies all work together as one. And so this is just proving it. They sent messages back and forth, texting each other back and forth, the police telling them, okay, well, don't go in that direction because there's counter protesters here. Go 
down this street and then go around and go this way. So they're literally directing these guys on the street. And then you want to know why we don't trust police. You want to know why we don't trust them. We got every reason not to. And this is just more proof that they can't be trusted and they have all kinds of biases when they're out on the street with the people. We didn't need more proof, but this is definitely more proof. But y'all, please tell me what you think. And you know what? And, And just think about it. The FBI knows about this. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security, they know about this and watch them do absolutely nothing as always. Just like they know all of these um, right wing extremists are in the police departments all across the country. They're aware of it. They'll write about it every now and then, but they won't do nothing about it. And this is just another situation. They're just babbling all up about it, but they're not going to do nothing about this. Those cops have been doing this for ages and they're going to continue to do it after their investigation is over. We all know this. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.